Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at optionalpha.com and in this video I want to talk about before we get into kind of the specifics throughout this course in this section on entering trades, just talk about our kind of logic and, and thought process of how we go about making trades and again just a 10,000 foot view of what we're trying to do. So it's obviously a game of numbers and I often say uh, and have often said that when it comes to options trading, we should run our business much like a casino does. And we all know that casinos make money. I mean, they make money hand over fist, but it's sometimes hard to step back and find out exactly where their edge is. I mean, we know that you know casinos make money and they have an edge and they want us to play, right? But let's quantify that. What does that look like? And, and what are the mechanics and logistics behind that? Because there's much more to it than just the percentage that they're going to win or lose on a given trade or, or table game. Uh, it comes down to sizing, table limits, uh, number of times that people play or roll the dice. There's a lot that goes into it and we should act much like a casino does but we often uh, do the complete opposite uh, and you'll see why. So how does a casino really make money and again what's their edge that they have over us? How do we quantify that? So let's start with the roulette. and. <clears throat> Admittedly, roulette is one of the worst odds games, but it's actually one of my favorite ones to play. I mean, go figure. But I like playing in it. I don't go there to make money, but when I go, I like to play roulette. I don't, you know, follow all the things with with poker and the different players at the table. I like I just like to play roulette and bet on the different you know numbers and spaces. But when it comes to roulette, and we know that game with the the die or with the uh, the wheel that spins and the the marble that falls, most often people will bet on red or black and it's it's pretty normal for some somebody to go into a, a casino and just you know put all their money on red or black or whatever the case is but here's the exact uh, way that it's paid out so you can see the payout is one to one that means if you bet a dollar they'll pay you a dollar if you win and if you bet a dollar and you lose you lose a dollar that's how the payout works so it's pretty fair as far as risk and reward you put up fifty dollars you could make fifty dollars or lose fifty dollars but here's where the casino's edge comes into play. And there's two different ones. So there's the European probability, which European roulette wheels only have one green zero. And so they do a little bit better as far as probability. Us Americans, we get hammered and we have two double zeros on our roulette wheel. And so that means that our probability is even lower. But you can see that the probability of this happening, either one of these, red or black, is just about 48, 47%. So even though you're making a dollar for every dollar you put up at risk, the likelihood of you keeping that is 47%, which means that the casino's edge is somewhere around two and a half to three percent. Okay, and so that's how we can find out what the casino's edge is, is because every time that we make this trade, theoretically, we're losing about two and a half to three percent. Now, it's not a lot, right? It's not like the casino is robbing you of your money immediately. But over time, you can see how this really grows. And again, you can see the number of total times it can happen and the colors and, and everything and the numbers that are covered in this. So as we go down on the roulette odds, you can see again that probability of red or black, you know, about 46, 47 percent, depending on how you calculate it and who you look at and number of occurrences. But you can see that the, the odds of that happening, even with just even numbers that have one to one payouts, are pretty much the same, right? Again, the casino is not going to rake you over the coals and take all your money at once. They want you to stay longer and they want you to play longer. And then obviously as you get further and further down, the probability of hitting kind of any one number on the roulette wheel uh, decreases dramatically, but the payout is obviously a lot higher. So instead of being one to one, they'll pay out 35 to one. So if you put up a dollar in money to bet and you hit it, you're going to make about $35 for every dollar that you put up. So Big payout, but it's got a very small likelihood of actually happening. Now, why table limits? So you've often heard that when you go to a casino, that the casino will have a little sign posted there that says that this table has a table limit or a bet limit of say $50 or $100. Well, having table limits increases the number of quote unquote plays that a person will make, which thus increases the house edge back to the casino. So the longer you play, the more you stand to lose. And that's period, end of story. There's no debating it. So casinos deliberately want you to make lots of plays and play a lot. And they want you to do it with a small amount of money. So I often say, and I've done a podcast on this too, is that 
if you walked into a casino and you told the casino manager, hey, I want to bet a million dollars on red right now. One bet, one million dollars on red, one roll, one spin, and that's it. And they would absolutely hands down say no way. Right? Most 99% of casinos would say absolutely no way. Because their one time probability of losing on that bet is about 47% that they're going to lose to you. So it's too big of a bet in one full swoop. What they would want to see is they want to see you spread that million dollars over thousands of different bets. So they they limit the number of or the amount of money that you can bet on any one roll or any one play because they know that the more you spend, the more you roll, the more behind that you become. So here's a great chart that really shows this. And this is with roulette, again, the odds of going with a uh, black or red or even an odd number. So just one spin. So if you spin it one time and the, the wheel goes around one time, you're likely to be behind on average about 51%. Now remember, you're getting paid 50-50 if you win. So your risk is almost exactly the same as your reward payout wise. Over the course of 100 spins, the percentage that you get behind is about 64%. So you're still kind of in the game here. You've been playing for a while, but now you're starting to lose more and more of that edge to the casino. And again, over a thousand spins and then over, more importantly, 10,000 spins, you can see that on a given night, over 10,000 spins, you have no chance of keeping any of the money that you started with. So the longer you play, the less consistent you become. In fact, consistency drops exponentially the longer that you play because that small house edge that we looked at before, that kind of two and a half to three percent, slowly goes back to the casino. And look, this is why they want us to play longer and longer. This is why they have great deals on casino trips and they offer you free rooms and free food because the longer you play, the more money that's going to get sucked back to them. So having all or having said all of this. As traders, and more importantly as options traders, we need to follow the same logic with how we run our business. And you have to think of it as a business to begin with. This isn't a hobby, this isn't something you do on the side. You have to run this thing like a business. And that means that you have to, one, make high probability trades. When you go to a casino, you're not making any high probability trades. There's a small edge to the house. In trading, we know how to make high probability trades and we can do that. Number two is we've got to keep our position size small. We've got to set table limits for ourselves, right? We can't go in there like a, and I often say like a rodeo cowboy, just slinging money around left and right. You got to go in there and you got to make small bets based on your position size. We've got a great guide inside Option Alpha in the guides and checklist section that helps you determine your position size based on a bunch of different account sizes. And number three, we have to understand that consistency is what leads to profits. So being able to make high probability trades with small positions over a long stretch of time, right? And going back to the casino example, they didn't really have a 100% chance of success in winning until they had a 10,000 spins. Now, that doesn't mean that we've got to make 10,000 trades, but that does mean that one or even 100 trades over the course of a year may not get us to that consistency level that we want. But we're assured that if we keep making high probability trades and keep setting table limits for ourselves, that we will see success the longer and longer we stay in it. That's why guys in this business who've been in it five years and 10 years become more and more successful because they've just made more trades. And if they stay consistent and persistent, it will lead to profits. So hopefully this has been a really good tutorial just to kind of, again, get you started before we get into a lot of the logistics of entering trades and how to kind of manage some of those entry points and looking for trades. It's important to take a step back and understand kind of the 10,000 foot view of what we're trying to do here. So as always, if you guys enjoy this video, please share it online, on Twitter, on Facebook, add a comment right below this video in the lesson page. If you have any questions, I'll make sure I get back to all of those and happy trading.